My name is Terry Anchebet and I'm the CEO and founder of Care Organics, a skincare line that focuses on products for men, women and children. I started my business informally in 2014 and launched um, Care Organics in 2016 and the reason I started was because my um, firstborn daughter uh, was diagnosed with eczema which is a dry skin condition and I couldn't find natural products um, within the space I was in that could address the lower cycle of, um, of her skin condition. So when a doctor referred me to look for shea butter and I found that it wasn't um, available enough locally at the time, then I started thinking there are other parents going through the same thing. Why can't I be the person to you know, provide this natural oil that every mom was looking for? So our business started off just with uh, shea butter um, right in the beginning and later on we have grown to um, make our products more uh, <coughs> solve different solutions that people um, you know are looking for so we have a baby line which is you know dedicated to sensitive skin and just protecting the baby's skin especially with the harsh weather and then we have a men's line where we have uh, products that you know men can use and we have a mom and baby line so specifically for pregnant women who are looking for something more lush more luxurious to take care of this of their skin as the belly is uh, growing the belly bump is, is growing and and then we just have you know regular family products uh, body balms that can basically anybody can use and also a facial line where we create uh, products that solve skincare issues like acne um, <clears throat> and uh, improve you know production of collagen and all these nice things so everybody has a glow. Important um, person where our business is concerned is the customer because if we're not meeting their needs, if we're not talking to them, if we're not engaging with them then it's very easy to lose them. So as Care Organics we make sure that one we're constantly um, you know, talking to our customers, asking them um, what they want, engaging with them on a one-on-one. -on -one. We have a phone number on, the, on our website, which they can call or WhatsApp. And our engagement is, is pretty high on, you know, on all our social media platforms as well. And because we have transitioned the business um, into about 70% an online business, it has meant that we've really had to, uh, you know, just boost our engagement online to make sure that our clients don't get left out or feel left out because we're not you know on a one-on-one -on -one with them so for the last um, couple of years since we transitioned to a higher percentage of online business we have made sure that you know we have whatsapp business um, and our clients can reach us at any time at least within the working hours that you know they'd like to speak with us on driving innovation we we're a small business so um, and a small batch business at that so it's very um, easy for us to know what our clients are looking for and our innovation is driven by what our customers want. So when they come to us then we go out and look for the best uh, products we can find, the best raw material, um, uh, you know is it ethically sourced and, and basically that space to just make sure that um, we're staying ahead of the curve for one we are creating products that has a ready market and that's of course by listening to, to our customers. So I would say for us listening to our customers has really um, you know, kept us on the innovative path and of course seeing what's happening globally and looking at the trends um, to see what, you know, what, what's happening globally and how we can ride on that wave. When it comes to financial risks and uh, you know, the kind of finances that a small business like ours requires, I would say it's the same for many small businesses within within our space. So it's where do we find the capital? To how are we, prov, prov, you know, protecting the money that we already have? How are we are putting in measures to ensure that we're not losing money in between, um, you know, the different processes that we have? So it's just being very hawk-eyed um, and and focused on you know our margins and making sure that we're protecting what we already have. And one of the other things, of course, is, you know, how are we keeping our money? Is it on the bank? Is it on M-Pesa? Is it on or rather mobile money? Is it on, you know, how do we keep it in a place where it is not only safe for the company, but we're not using it for things that we shouldn't use it for, which is a challenge that many small businesses currently face. 
I started my business with 60,000 shillings, which um, I took out from my salary. So not really savings, but um, something I just took out from a salary because I was working full time at the time. And since then, I've plowed in all the money that we've made into the business. Um, I haven't taken a loan yet, although I'm getting there. Uh, but currently, all the financing is from within the business, and from time to time, I, I, you know, I add in some director's capital. On payments, we have uh, we're fully digitalized. Now, of course, if we do get um, clients who want to pay cash we ask them to do a mobile payment. However, we are working with, um, with, with third partners who are also fully digitized. So um, Visa, you know, um, other digital platforms as well. Um, and that for us has been incredibly important because moving the business digitally has meant, sh has meant that we can track the money better. We are able to see what comes in on a daily basis. We're able to basically protect um, our capital in a better way. So, so yes, uh, I, you know, ninety-five percent of of, um, of all the transactions that happen for us now happen within the digital platforms. I'm also excited that um, the riders that we use will now be, you know, driving or riding around with a POS from Visa, so that you know, um, our clients who want to purchase using their card will be so much easier so you don't have to have you know necessarily mobile money uh, you don't have to do cash the rider will come to you and he will carry he'll be carrying a pos and that's really exciting because then we also meet the needs of our clients who are not necessarily um, heavily on the mobile money platforms or or using cash so that's that's a very exciting uh, one for us so our brand story is, um, you know, we, we are a business that believes in sustainability. We work um, and source our products from, from Africans. And, and, you know, as we know, the majority of the highest quality raw materials in terms of oils are from Africa. So we work with African oils and butters. You know, we get our argan oil from Morocco. We get a shea butter from Uganda. We get our marula oil from South Africa or from Kenya. We get our coconut oil from our beautiful Kenyan coast. So for us, it's basically Africa in a bottle or Africa in a jar. It's um, we want to you know represent our continent and all its beautiful, uh, rich oils and butters, and it's our culture as well. For someone starting out in business, I'll just say start. You know, um, and I always believe that if something is keeping you awake at night, and, and I, many of us in business go through that a long time, that's something that you need to take seriously and it's something that you need to start immediately. You don't have to wait for the big money to come in. Uh, start with your proof of concept. If you want to start with 10 bottles, if you want to start with, um, you know, 50, just start small, find your market, use it as a pilot um, to test the market as well, but just start. Start now Whew, this covid season has been uh interesting at the beginning of the year of course we had our grand plans and what we wanted to do um uh, and we're also thinking on the shop front side of things and naturally now with um corona we've had to really focus on online on the online business space but it's been interesting because our business actually grew um has grown during the covid phase because naturally uh, a lot more people are ordering from home uh, or from their offices, do not want to walk into a shop. So we shelved um, our plans for a shop front and we have seen the value of that one. Our overhead costs are of course a lot lower, but also we have met new clients who would not, who did not know us before, uh, but because we have put a lot more effort in our marketing online, um, this period has been one where we've had to be very flexible with, with what we're doing, but also very focused on how do we grow the um, our digital um, our dig the digital part of our business. So, whereas it was a lot lower uh, percentage wise in terms of the balance with the retail stores, now it's gone a lot higher. Um, but we've also learned so much about how to digitize, how to market on the digital platforms, how to attract new clients, followers. We've also learned the importance of partnerships um, with other people who can add value to
to our business and we can add value to their businesses as well. So so one of one of one of those is how we've built the digital our digital shop, which is something we haven't done on our own, but we've worked with a local partner to ensure that all our products are available online and um, you know our clients can purchase using other mobile plat uh, mobile money platforms, um, Visa card and whatever other means um, that's available on, on on digital. So it's been an interesting it's been an interesting journey.